I can go there too. Okay, we got that. Okay, boom. Chris, you were saying something about. Chris, you were saying something about you making money, but now what you're going to do with it. Tell me about that thought process. That's a whole nother planet. You know, when you got money, you know, I mean, and I, I don't really feel like I was really broke or something, but you know, when you got like money that you don't have to do anything with, it makes it like, what, what do you do with all this money? Do you go blow it on something stupid? I know I'm not going to do that. What are you invested in? You know, what, what is a safe vehicle where that money can keep growing and protect myself? Cause I know, you know, money with nothing to do is definitely going to find somewhere to go. It's going to find a, a problem, you know, wow. so I wow. don't want to have that problem. I want to tie it up in something, you know, where it's working. Me and Eddie, we just having that talk this morning, dog. What do you think about the philosophy of earning money? Managing money is infinitely harder than earning it, Chris. Yeah, managing money is uh, another another playing field. You know, it's different, especially if you get large sums of money. When you start getting like money where your bills are already paid, you're not thinking about bills no more because that's what most people you come across. They're worried about the next bill, worried about the next thing to, uh, you know, they got to pay. And when you don't have that worry and you're stress free, you're like, wait a minute. You got other worries now. Now you got to protect the money. Now you got to make sure you don't lose it or, you know, do something stupid with it. Or, oh, now I need a new car. Or you need something you don't really need. You know what I mean? Wow. Welcome, brother. Welcome. Welcome to the burden. Welcome <laughs> to the burden. Welcome to the obligation. Welcome to the world of managing capital. Yeah. It yeah. ain't no joke. I'm, I'm ready for to set up that IRA and all that other stuff so I can get that tax free money are you talking my language now chris good god who you talking now <laughs> so i can get up there right like your like your president do and don't pay no tax hey and man mad. don't the thing is you can't hate the players i just you play the game man you can't hate the players you can't hate the players chris what i was like when i first Finally understood. You know, it's weird. It takes the time for a man or us humans to realize that you can only earn so much. Yeah. And you can only spend so much. And you can only do so much. So it's like you got to do something good with it, though. Make a difference. So that's really, you know, I definitely want to make a difference with it. I just, I, like I said, I don't want to waste a bunch of money on stupid stuff. You know, I've never really been that kind of person anyway. So how I always are you, like Chris? to invest it. How, how old are you? 37. How old? Just turned 37. 27. 37. Oh, thir okay. 37. Okay. 81. 80s, baby. Just barely made it into the millennial class. All right. Thank you for joining me today, brother Chris. Thanks for hanging out with me yesterday, man. I saw you dropping some knowledge and wisdom. Something you were talking about title insurance. You want to get to that also? Most definitely. That title little, insurance. Huh? Yes. I'll make a little note of that right here. Because you were saying yesterday something about how they didn't want to give it to you or something crazy like that. Well, from what I was, you know, doing a lot of research on the topic and things like that, um, you know, I heard some people say if you're doing a deal subject to you don't need title insurance if you have no money in the deal, from what I understand. But then that's why I say, let me just ask Chris Haskins. He knows this stuff. Let me pick his brain just a little bit, not too much, just a little bit right under the cap there. <laughs> think about it and so that's the only reason i asked it last night i got you my brother all right yes i have done quite a few of subject trees and my mentor has done a bunch and his man once again dude all i do is stand on the shoulders of giants Golly. hey you know all i do is watch the dogs all day um, uh doggy daddy daycare up in here <laughs> you know, so i'm standing on the shoulders of giants and the guys that taught me, man, I had my mentors own mobile home parks. Wow. They didn't own the lot. You know, this dude owned lining owned four mobile home parks. And we used to ride around and go to lunch with him. He'd tell me all about that self-directed Roth IRA stuff. And we'll get to that title insurance thing. All right, I don't know where Eddie is, but let's get rolling. Class, welcome. Welcome to another 
today, another training with uh, with me and Eddie, aka Mr. Transaction Engineer. I've got a special guest with me today, Chris Monroe. What up? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Transaction Engineer. What's up, baby? Woo! Let's get this party started. <laughs> Turn up. I don't even know where to start with these gentlemen here, but let's get rocking and rolling. My mission, my ministry is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. Make sure you like the content while you're watching this. It is live. <clears throat> Subscribe to my channel. Refer or comment your questions are going to go in the chat box. Any questions you've got for Brother Chris. Today, our topic is going to be Yes, get ready, get ready, get ready. A case study. Chris just closed his first subject to deal. Congratulations, brother Chris. Thank you, thank you. It was a, it was a nice little ride, and it's a whole lot better than just the wholesale side. Oh yeah, we'll baby. Get to that too. I'm going to talk about the cash flow quadrant. Chris, give us some background. Eddie, you want to drop anything before we get into the background of this deal? No, sir. All right. We're in the road. Good. Okay. Hanging out with Mr. Trans. Good grace of this dude. I don't know if you're an investor or a model. I don't know. <laughs> model, man. I got big things going on, brother Chris. I told you, man. We, hey, we're going all the way to the top and beyond. All right. So my favorite way to buy, Chris, is what we're going to get into this morning, this great day. Buying subject to selling on a lease option. Give me the backstory, Chris, how we found this deal. Hit it. All right. So um, I basically have been wholesaling since I closed my first deal on August 31st. And uh, so a lot of deals I'm, I have marketing out right now for wholesale deals. But some of them, as you know, will not qualify for a typical wholesale deal. They need you know more money than what it is. So I started you know doing a little more study and you know trying to see what other things you can do with these deals as they come in because you spend the money to get marketing in. So for this particular deal came in on a ringless voicemail drop. Um, you know, and I leave a message to say, you can either call me back or text me back if that's easier for you. And a lot of people like to do that text. So I always say, embrace that technology. So somebody went on and text me back and say, yeah, I want to sell my house, but I'm not sure if you can help me because of what I owe on it and some other stuff. So I Rewind. sent a message back. Let me cut you off real quick, sure. Chris, but I don't want to miss it. But a, a ringless voice drop, elaborate, give me a little bit of a 40,000 foot picture of that. Okay, from uh, you take a list like you would do a mailing list instead of mailing it, like say you get a list from List Source or one of those companies, and you upload it into your Ringless voicemail system, uh, and you do this recording, and it blasts out tech, uh, a message. It actually sends out a voicemail right into their voicemail box. So it does like a half a ring. It doesn't ring all the way, but it rings <coughs> and it goes straight into their voicemail, and it leaves a message which makes it sound like, oh, sorry, I missed you. Uh, I was uh, just trying to see if you were interested in selling your house. We buy them as is, regardless of the condition. If you're interested in learning more, feel free to call me back at this number. You can text back, you know, and then they call back or text back. Or some people just call back and say, who just called me? Nevertheless, we get a response. We need a yes or a no. You want to sell your house. So it's much more effective than the traditional snail mail where you send all that money out and don't know where it went or what happened. So I'm against right. that, but we'll get into that later if needed. I know y'all know the pain on that. Preach, but, uh, preach, it, preach it, preach it, brother, preach it. So I went on and uh, did the ringless voicemail drop and she responded back and said she wants to sell her house, but she don't know if I can help. I said, oh, we have several programs we can help you with. Do you have a moment that we can get you on the phone? So she said, maybe on my lunchtime at 1130. So you know where I was at at 1130? Right here on the smartphone, giving her a call, boom. Got her on the line, got a little backstory. Oh, yeah, this and that. And it wasn't, she's not even living in the house. This was a house she had her daughter in law living in, a four bedroom, beautiful house in uh, sunny What's South St. Louis County. What is her story, Chris? Her story was um, she just had a house that she had her daughter in law in, and she didn't know they wasn't making the payments. So oh, this lady's back. Lord. And she like, wait a minute, what you mean I'm about to lose my house? And from the research I've done digging back, this is something similar happened maybe three or four years ago in this same house. So I guess she knew when she went down the road that time, she didn't want to go down the road this time and really lose her house. She did something creative and refinanced or 
did something silly and you know got it taken care of at that time but this time she wasn't playing around she said oh no nah, we getting rid of this house one way or another so when i go to look at the house she got a for sale by owner sign out there and i'm guessing that's the only marketing she did and it's a little quiet street so only so many cars going down so evidently she didn't get enough people looking at it she need a real marketer in there somebody like me so i went over there at night time met her at about six o'clock at night you know well it get dark early now so it was about six o'clock when she got off work and i finally got to go meet her look around the house she showed me the house kitchen kitchen bathroom you know whatever all this stuff look good nice house bonus living room what was the, what is the condition of that though what is this, what was the condition chris the condition of a house you can live in it but it isn't perfect it needed a little touch-ups you know like fix so whoever put the carpet down and know what they were doing stuff it's like livable, that though. it's livable livable yeah we'll say livable but it was remodeled about three years ago a new kitchen uh a new hot water heater a new air conditioner so somebody spent money on this pretty recently so the house is in pretty good shape overall wow it just needed, you know little finishing touches like light plate covers and you know st little silly stuff stuff i'm not gonna do i'm gonna let that tenant buyer do how, but, long, uh, how long was the vacant chris it was vacant i would say about maybe 45 days or so maybe what is it under two months where did the daughter-in-law go a daughter uh she already had moved out they just left the house and stopped making payments they, they just left, left home for dead just leave her out there in the dry i guess i don't know they just i mean slam, these stuff, man you gotta check on these people slam dunk so you know so they highly motivated it's a vacant house highly. that helps nobody's in there she already been down this road before that she might lose her house. She don't want to lose it. And uh, she already has her own house, so she don't need this house. So it's everything fell right in order. Nice. We're going to get into some so numbers. Other words, Go. So in other words, she was very motivated. Highly motivated. So motivated, ain't nothing I could have did wrong, I don't think. <laughs> I would <laughs> hope. Give me the booty. <laughs> They grab them ankles. So there it is. No, I wouldn't necessarily. <laughs> out even want it. It's out even want it. <laughs> no, nah, it wasn't that deep. But as far as the numbers, you say you want to get into the numbers? Well, now that we know the backstory, we know that she's motivated because her daughter's moving out, left her hanging. That's where we're that's where our knife starts to turn. So the knife is turning, just a little bit of blood is gushing. She's feeling the pain. She's two months behind on the mortgage uh and uh you know they're sending letters like hey what's up you gonna pay what's going on we need our money man you know them banks ain't playing so we want our money and uh or we have to take this house so you and uh you so like i said she had something similar in the past which i found out when digging on this deal that um maybe i guess four or five years ago she almost lost this house before and they did something to put a second mortgage on it but she don't have to make payments on it they did some kind of hood or I don't know, some kind of program where somebody took a second mortgage to take a chunk of that equity and say, you don't have to make payments and it's not due until like 2045 or someday in the future, but there's no yeah. payments on it. So, it. so that, that was sitting on there. So basically um, to get into the numbers. Well, before we get to the numbers, how did you, what work when, when you're creating your universe right in front of you with these people, you're going to create the circumstances that you want. Tell me about the words when she's telling you what she owes. I want to hear the conversation where your brain went from shit. I can't, this is no equity here. I can't wholesale this. Tell me about that conversation. So yeah, um, when she told me the numbers and I seen that it really wasn't a wholesale deal um, and she needed, you know, speed and everything else to go along with it. Um, I basically just told her that, yeah, we could take over your house, make the payments. We'll be responsible for all, for all the maintenance and repairs. And uh, you don't have to do anything. The, the loan will stay in your name. I made sure she understood that clearly. The loan will stay in your name. We'll make the payments. And uh, you won't have to deal with this house anymore. We'll take full responsibility for it. We have buyers ready to go, ready to get in here. And uh, our tenant buyers, you know, we have a program. I use your favorite word. We have a program where we put people into houses that can't typically qualify right now, but we help them get that together where they can actually buy this house outright, you know, maybe in a couple of years, but I'm not going to make any claim on how long this process will take, but we will not leave you hanging. You have oh. nothing to worry about. 
I love it, Chris. I love it. I feel like a, I get, I'm getting chills because I know the system is duplicatable all around the country. Most definitely. Chris, <clears throat> Chris you sound like you know what you're doing over there, man. Oh, I study from the Giants, too. You know, I, I take a little right. snake bits. I learn from, you know, the Godfather. You know who that is. Oh, I'm yeah. going to see him probably next month. You come today to in Atlanta. Yeah, come on down. I'll be there. All Me right. and Chris. Yeah, come down, man. You still I'm coming, Chris? Yeah, I'm going to shoot down, dog. I'm coming. Yes, sir. We're going to have a goddamn another YouTube live, guys. <laughs> <laughs> a party up in there, huh? Hey, T.F. Yeah. Hey, right. I'll check, too. I may have the uh, Airbnb, maybe. Oh, I think that's super. No, that's close. I don't know. The Airbnb might be open. I'll check for y'all, man. Look at that now, Eddie. Look at that now. Yeah. Because that's 30 oh. days out. Yeah. Yeah. Shit, this is right now. Okay. So there's no equity in this deal. Um, there's a little bit of equity. She owed about 113. All right, so she owes. And that's P I T I principal interest, taxes, and insurance on the payment of 780 a month. And the ARV is about 135 or so. So it's a little bit of equity, but not a lot. It's not enough for a wholesale deal, you know. They want juicy deals on the wholesale market. They want a steal of a deal when you're dealing with these wholesaling people. Yeah, especially with guys like me. Or a newbie will take less of a profit. There he is. He wants to get in on the show. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow we got the kids too. So when she goes, hey man, I think your dog jealous a little bit, man. Every time we go live, he wants to say something. What's up with him, Chris? I might have to bring him in here. Bring him in. You got to let the people see him one good time, man. Come here, see. Come here, see. Yeah, man. Come on down, man. We're going to have a good time. It'll be fun. I I only been to Atlanta once, and that's only to the airport, if that counts. Oh, man. You're going to love it, man. You might not want to leave, man. I know. I've been here my whole life, so. I hear it's good for entrepreneurs there because I'm, you know, I live that life. I haven't had a regular job since 2011. So I, you know, once you get on that other side, you don't want to go back. Well, yeah, it, it's over with. <laughs> you can't it's even see with, the other man. side. Go get a what? A job? Well, you you're smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Say it's too much money out here. All right, hey, let me focused. I, hey, I said I'd rather be homeless on the damn bridge. But you give me a laptop and a phone, I'm gonna come back up out of that sucker. Thirty days. I'm there back. you go. <laughs> All I'm right. Back. So, uh, she owes 113k, Chris. That's correct. That's gonna cover that first and that second. What is it worth? Worth about 135 to 140. Well, in my world, this falls under the no equity category, brother. Right. Yeah, twenty thousand, dude. Is that's 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 what it's gonna cost you to sell it. Exactly. That's just fees to the, everybody who's getting paid, except for you. Yeah. <laughs> so you said the yeah. month the monthly payment is seven eighty. P I T I for my viewers that don't know what that is, Chris, break it down. P I T I principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. You want to cover that stuff when you're counting this money going out. Yeah, we got to know that's so important because people get a loan that's interest only, Chris, and they say, well, the payment's only 780 Then you got to tag on another 300 for taxes and insurance. Yep. yep. So you want an all inclusive payment of the PITI. And you found that out by doing what? Uh, I actually asked her first, and then uh, I confirmed it when I got that authorization letter signed by the bank. I mean, signed by her to go send to the bank to really get the real numbers, you know. But she 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 was really honest with everything, so I'll give her that. That was a good thing. All right, but you so you did something you trusted, but you verified. <laughs> Trust but verify always. All right. Oh yeah. So now we're getting in this. We know your outgo is seven eighty a month. You owe one thirteen. These are your hard numbers. I gotta always like to keep it on two sides. You can buy. We're gonna go over the buy first. Right, and she was in arrears. Uh, 
two months when we first started talking and then we just went over December. So by the time my hands got on it, we were back payments three months. I'm around up to 2,400. Yeah, about 2,500, something like that. Because yeah. the fees. Yeah, you know, fees. we love the fees at the bank. Late <laughs> fees. So roughly, we're, yeah, let's go ahead and that's 25, man. So you are 2,500 walking in the door. And that's not counting the closing costs yet. Yeah, we'll get to that. Golly. Closing costs to buy. Now, when you go buy it, you got closing costs. What is it? Are you paying her closing costs, Chris? Yes, sir. She has no money. So, you know, she has no money. So I say I'll pay all the closing costs or what I told her when we had the conversation. When I buy this house, we usually pay all the closing costs. That's how I said it, basically. I like that. Basically, you're saying <laughs> all the rejection or objection that you might even be thinking of, I'm going to take care of. That's right. You have nothing to worry about. Sign right here. <laughs> so closing costs on your side and her side. Give me a ballpark number. Uh, that ended up being around 800. For both sides? Both sides. Good and Lord. It, yeah, they kind of jipped me too because they charged me $175 for the mobile notary. Yeah, that was high. Yeah, because I'm like, oh, it was six o'clock at night. So we had to charge a little more because it wasn't during normal hours or some old excuse they gave me. I'm like, damn, 175, she need to pay that. <laughs> That's an upsell. I don't I don't pay overages. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't be any more than ten dollars a document. No, nah, they well, that's what they had on my sheet. One seventy five. Like, what the hell is this? Because when I originally asked the people that I was going to close it through, I said, "What do you think the closing cost will be?" You know, for me to pay both sides. She said about six fifty. So you know, I was expecting around that, but you know, it was more. No problem though. Yeah, it ain't no problem. I wouldn't worry about that. Pennies. Pennies. Water off a duck's back. Don't worry about the pennies. Going for the dollars, brother. Now tell me about this closing company or attorney that closed this for you chris how did you find them and who were they um there was a local title company i referred to one of the other local investors here in st louis and asked them who do they use or can you recommend someone that can handle this transaction because you know we don't really have a this, this is a title company state so we don't have attorneys doing a lot of deals unless it's you know special stuff like this they can do it so i actually got a referral from one of the local investors here in St. Louis. And when you talked to that title company, you said you went in there talking all this crazy gibberish, gobbledygook, Italian, uh, <laughs> Chinese, Korean language that you're talking. What did they say? Oh, uh, well, they tried to send me down a rabbit hole, but I didn't fall for it. They tried to, you know, because I had to tell them, yeah, we're going to close it in a land trust and you try to break it all down for them. But they was like, oh, yeah, we know. and. And they try to tell me that, oh, yeah, you need to get bank accounts so you can accept rent payments and all this. I said, oh, no, 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 no. I don't need no help with none of that. I just need you to close <laughs> this in the land trust. Don't try to give me nothing extra. I don't need none of that. Just put it in this name I got here. I'll send you the documents. Because at first I asked her, you know, can you all do this? And they're like, oh, yeah, we can do it. Our in-house attorneys, they'll only charge you $500. I said, never mind. I got the Chris Atkins package. I don't need your $500 deal, baby. I got the documents. I'm just going to send them to you. What are they going to charge 500 for? The attorney to breathe on it. What? They tried to. See, they tried to draft the documents, but I already had it because I got it from Chris. Okay. See, they tried to upsell me, but I ain't fall for the okie doke. But they have documents, no doubt, that might be better for your state or whatever. Did they look over the documents? Oh yeah, they looked over it. Everything was great, but they tried to do that. Oh, oh, my attorney will look it over and he'll just charge you 500. And I was like, no, nah, I got the paperwork. I don't need no help on that part. <laughs> <laughs> they try to upsell, you know, luckily I'm a salesperson and I don't fall for the upsells too much. Right. This is something I really need, but I didn't need no extra $500 fee. I love it. So you came in there, you have everything. You're so... That's why you're self-sufficient. You walk in there, look, I just need you to close this thing out. That's close right. out. I got the ammo. I got the gun. I need you to pull the trigger. That's it. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah. you're walking in there. You show them the documents. They see your documents. What did they say? 
Um, well, I didn't do it. This was all virtual. I do a lot of stuff virtual too. I didn't put that in in the early part. 90% of my business is virtual. I don't see a lot of sellers. I don't see a lot of houses. I don't do a lot of that stuff. I do a lot of stuff, you know, over the phone or, you know, things like that. So this was all through email and through phone. So I emailed them the documents and then they say, yeah, we can go ahead and do it. Wow. So they were, they didn't want to change anything on your docs. Yeah. They did not want to. I'm sorry. No, they didn't. They wanted to charge. They they didn't. Before, they didn't see the documents first. They didn't see. They didn't see the documents till everything was ready to go. So I didn't have to get an okay from them. It's just that when I presented it to them, they were like, "Yeah, we can draft it and we can do all of this and try to upsell me that 500 extra." But I was right. like, "No, I got everything. I don't need it. I just so. uh, we just need you to process this properly so that I'm covered, so that this thing goes into a trust." So that uh, you know, nobody calls loans doing none of this crazy stuff. Nice, good for you, man. That is so. I'm so happy for this. All right, so you're buying it here. This side gets you in, Eddie. Anything else you want to cover here on the buy side? We got monthly uh -huh. payment, what he owes, arrears, closing costs, and you told me you didn't want to give. Oh, you not didn't want to, but. Uh, I, I kind of like to give the seller something, Chris. You said you just walked out of the joint with it. You just took the house over, period. Well, I mean, $2,500 or something. Who came out? I came out of pocket for that. You know, that wasn't like I had a buyer lined up yet. I had to come out of pocket. So I'm like, right. well, um, that's your payment. You know? Is it? Yeah, I mean, it ain't like it was $0. That's real true money out of somebody's pocket. Right. Yeah, you right. You, you really helping them, man. It, you blessing them as well. They don't have to deal with a headache anymore. Exactly. There's a lot of stress on people, man. A peace of mind is in it, is man, everything, man. A peace of mind, man. It's that probably was something that, that was keeping her up at night. Most definitely. Because she responded back so quick on that ringless voicemail drop. I said, dang, it's a motivated seller. Let's get them. You know, when they come <laughs> in fired up, I want to get them while they motivated, thinking about it, losing sleep. Let me go on and get you, let me get you locked up and get you ready to go. <laughs> and you save in a credit, Chris. Now that the credit bureaus will, will report this loan is being current. Exactly. We want to. We got it current now, and you know, once we get to this sales side, we'll break down how we are gonna get this thing paid and make some money on it. Oh yeah. Now, my, my last question is: When was this? When was? When did she buy it? And when was the loan originated? Um, you know, I'm not sure about that, but I'm thinking it's due in 2045. So let's see here. So maybe it refinanced in 2015, if that's 30 years. Yes, you got you got 25, you got 25 years left. Yeah. I'm just rounding up, man. For 20 yeah. So basically you got five years of free principal pay down and interest accrued. I mean paying down that interest too. We got that, but don't forget this house was renovated with that money she cashed out the last time. So the kitchen's brand new. Oh, you know, it's a lot of work that was done to this house recently within the last three years. Sweet. So this is a definition of a pretty house. Hey, can okay. you share your screen, Chris, and show us some pictures? Um, if I don't knock everything off in the process, I can. <laughs> Go to the left, and it'll come off. If you just take your mouse over to the left. Okay, let's see here. Control room, chat, screen share. All right. So what I'm gonna do here is pull up some pictures first. Hold up. Before All I right, share my screen, I got two monitors going on. You know, I got too much technology. I don't want to knock everybody off trying to do something special. Any questions you got? Make sure you put them in the chat box for Chris to answer. We're gonna knock them down at the end. If you want us to answer it immediately, you have to do a super chat. We're gonna answer all questions. Put it in the chat box with your city, so I know where the pe where the people's where the people's at. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful house. I would move in it myself if I didn't need, if I needed a four bedroom. But just little old me, I don't need that much space. Hey man, you gonna have so many coming through that? Hey, they gonna be the least of your work. I'm, I'm gonna find hey, me one to move into though. Yeah, that's all I do, man. I got along one time back back in shit. What was it? Damn, I don't even remember. I think 07 or something. That was the last loan I got. Subject to and everything. There you go, subject to, bro. I might even buy my dog a house subject to. 
put him in a bicep. <laughs> Damn. Uh, Morris, L, are you sending out the subject two packet? Yeah, I'll put a. Morris, do you need the docs? Man, let me go on here live. These yeah, docs are uh, changing. Two pack. It works. You got a living testimonial here. Oh, man. Hallelujah. Tell, tell them about where you got the docs from, man. Chris? I got it from Chris Haskins. We got that package. We got the sub two deal, package deal, and at least option package deal. Good Lord. I'm too cheap, Chris, ain't I? I think I got something else getting stuff, you know, just in case. You got the, you got the land trust? Did you already have a land trust? Did you already have a land trust, Chris? Did I already have a what now? You got your own land trust? Yeah, I already set it up. I did. I got that from you too. Okay, all right, man. Holy cow, you are implementing monster. When you put it on sale. I'd be like, it's on sale. Sign me up, baby. Right. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. All, all right, right, let's see let's this see house. Okay. Pictures. All right. Let's see. Share screen. Let's see. Uh, is that it? Screen share. Uh, let's see. Hope it don't knock everything off or do something silly. I don't even know which screen is going to share. I got two monitors up. Oh, yeah. I don't How about know this? in a second. You want to put the link in the type the link in the chat box and I'll click on it and I'll share it. There's a link. Oh, you, okay. sent me, you sent me a link the other day. Okay, I'll do that. Is, is there a Zillow or something? Oh, I think it works. Okay, I got it to work. I got the screen share to work. Boom. So it let me it asked me which one I wanted to share. All right, okay. so that one. You should see a house popping up in about three, two, one, boom. Nice. <laughs> so that's let me if I can do this right. Talk through us. Talk house. through. We got windows, roof looks good. Yep. Yeah. Um, a nice little uh, four bedroom, one bath. It's missing that bath. I know you want that uh, other bathroom in, in a deal, but that this was a carport on the far right side. It used to be a carport there. They converted it to make it a fourth bedroom. Mm. So that kind of added a little bit of value. Most of the houses in the area do not have a fourth bedroom. Um, the other thing about this house, there is no basement. So it's on a concrete slab. Let me uh, do this like this. Like right, Saint, <clears throat> you you uh, in Missouri? It comes with the refrigerator. Let me let me put that down. That's like a that. plus. Shit, we comes with the it. refrigerator. Comes with the oven. Comes with the dishwasher. Comes with. Uh, well, that's it. So that's the kitchen there. You can tell that bad boy laid out. Wow. Nice and new. Mm -hmm. White oh, cabinets. Really, really. All mm -hmm. white everything. Let me see. I can make that bigger. There you go. I thought Look I could just switch the picture from while I'm in here, but I guess it won't let me do that. Let's have to make it small again. Stupid technology. Um, yeah. These are just some of the pictures I had of the inside. Um, they had a lot of stuff in here when I first took the pictures. This is the first living room. All that stuff's gone. <laughs> now. But this is the first living room, and then it had another bonus great room in the middle of the house. Kitchen and bathroom updated as well. Bathroom, nice little cute vanity there. Everything all cute and pretty. The definition of a pretty house. Mm -hmm. Nice uh, shower head there with the extension and all of that good stuff. Um, what else they got here? I mean, it's just a basic house. Carpet. They had, you know, they, they need some paint, you know, stuff like that. Because, you know, who wants every room to be paint? You might have little boys. What what did you have? What what sites did you you listed on? This, um, on this is my website. Actually, one of my websites. I have about I don't know five of them or something dealing with this business. But this is my uh, one to attract uh, buyers or sellers actually. But I'll put it on there to list it. Um. So basically, yeah, I got these nice little finishes with these lights. I wanted her to leave the furniture in there. I got that from the OG Godfather Ron Legrand. Say, yeah, so you can leave this furniture here. He, she ain't leave it though. I say, you leave this furniture in here. I'm gonna sell it with the house as an upsell. I sell it out of there. <laughs> all these nice finishes. So this is how it was when I saw it. The day I looked at it, this is how I had all this stuff in there. Nice big old closets, big closets. This is that great room. It's dark in there because the light wasn't on, but 
That's the extra living room they had. That's that's the carport right there. <clears throat> no, that's the extra. It's the room in the middle of the house. The carported room. Ah, oh, and then it, oh, that's the kitchen. Then they had this little storage area. So this is the only thing they had for storage. There was no basement. The uh, it was just a small little bedroom basically for the uh, other one. Electrical, pretty updated. Oh, I get the washer and dryer as well. So I got the washer, dryer, refrigerator, oven, um, dishwasher, all included. I was trying to get this furniture, like I said, too, because I, I had, you know, I could do something with that. Get a couple hundred for that just by itself. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I think this is the carport room right here, I believe. Yeah, this is it. That's the room that they converted from a carport to a bedroom. And then this is what the outside looks like down the street one direction, down the street the other direction, just to give an idea of what the neighborhood looks like. So I took good pictures of it, I think. Need a little yeah. bit of stuff on the siding. Like I say, the house isn't perfect, but it's you know you can move in. This is the backyard. It had a big swimming pool back there, where there's a hole in the ground. But the person that's getting it say he likes it. He's going to do something with it. So I say okay. sign him up. <clears throat> this is the side of the house. The central he heating and air the Brand new. Well, two years old. Can't go So that's how that puppy looked. Nice little beautiful right. four bedroom house. Boom. Eddie, he got the central heating and air new man. That's five grand right there. Wow. Man, you caught a lick, man. Say That's show up and win, baby. All you gotta do is show up. Wow. So yeah, four bedroom, three-year-old AC, updated kitchens. All right. That stuff up there I wrote. Okay, so we're on the buy side. <clears throat> so we're closing it out. Eddie, eight hundred dollars for both sides. Tell me about on my closing costs, when I'm doing one of these, it's on both sides, it's going to cost me three grand. What is it going to cost you down in Georgia? Just to close it out. Yeah. 1500 On both? That's for both sides? Oh, no, no, no. It, no. The front side, yeah, 3000 Front side, 1500 on the back end. That's 3000 Chris, you are very blessed in uh, Missouri, brother, to be able to buy a, buy a house on both sides for 800 bucks. But you know, when we buying the subject too, we were reselling it on the lease purchase most of the time. You so gotta we, buy you gotta still represent yourself when you're buying it. Uh oh. Did I lose my camera? We just meet with the we just meet with the attorney office and they close it out. The whole transaction fifteen hundred. I'm saying oh, that's gonna represent Altogether. Yeah, you got the sell you got both sides though. You got the you got your side as a buyer and then the seller side. Right. Oh, it's 1500 all together. Okay, 1500 Yeah, we, yeah, man. Damn, y'all 3000 Chris. I mean, sorry, you know, I'm they're saying. charging you based. We have to, we're paying 0.7% on transfer fees at the courthouse, though. How much? It's, I think it's 0.7 or 0.8%. So if the house worth 200000 man, I mean, whatever that is right there, that's $1,400 in record in stamps, doc stamps. Yeah. Damn. Wow. Yeah, because they're not letting you. They won't let. They won't. They're charging you based on the value, not on the purchase price. Wait, me. Hey. Put my chat back up. I'm doing a webinar with Eddie right now. Y'all, y'all paying some high closing costs, huh? We pay like fifteen hundred. We close them out on the buying the selling side. All right, so we yeah, pay really like fifteen hundred. Um, yeah, fifteen hundred everything. So y'all eight hundred for everything, Chris. Yeah, buyer side, seller side, and the uh, but I didn't get the title insurance, so I don't know how much that would have been. I did okay. not get title insurance. Probably like about three hundred. So you probably been at about eleven hundred, twelve hundred. Oh, all right, not bad. All right, so we're in it on this side. So we got twenty five hundred out plus eight. So you got four grand out to buy it. About thirty three hundred. Twenty five plus eight. You have to, you're not cleaning. That, you're not doing nothing. Doing nothing, man. That house needed. Actually, I got some stuff out of there that I actually sold. If you want the real truth, but you know, I got paid to clear some stuff away. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, let's get to the sell side. 
The seven the slot. On the lease option. I love it. I love it. So, yep, yeah, that's the fun part. So, the lease option. Tell um, me about your marketing to attract this buyer, tenant buyer. Um, first thing I did is went to the most popular website on the internet when it comes to real estate. Starts with a Z, ends with a W. The class should know what that is. Zillow. Zillow. <laughs> so, like I said, this seller did not have any good marketing out whatsoever. So, I didn't even need her to release her Zillow page. I just went on in there, claimed it as the owner, put the pictures up, updated all the information, put it on Zillow. I put it on uh, Craigslist, your other favorite website. I put it on, oh, I put it on a lot of sites, Facebook. Now, what magical language are you putting on this ad? <clears throat> Rent to own four bedroom in South County, ready to go, or something to that effect. Um, basically, no banks, no credit is okay. What monthly rent are you looking for here, Chris? I didn't publish any monthly rent amount, I just put out a price of 165k. I did not publish any prices, I didn't publish any uh anything really just that price and the, the information about the house wow hmm. what do you think about that i didn't one, say a down payment amount i let them I, I asked the buyers how much do you have to put towards a down payment and i got a lot Where? of car kickers talking about oh i got a thousand dollars i'm like yeah you got the wrong number here baby not today but somebody <laughs> i got 1500 i can maybe come up with 1500. no nah, it ain't gonna happen over here um so yeah i did not publish so i had a lot of people trying to hit me with that thousand dollars two thousand dollar stuff which you know i just said we'll keep your number just in case we'll see what happens because i know tax season coming up next month i was willing to pay that mortgage one more time you know if i need oh, to. Yeah. oh yeah you know even so two more times it. you know whatever you listed it for sale now I'm, my mind is trying to wrap around rent to own is going to be in the rental section or you list you're listing it in the for sale side rent to own yeah, I put it in for sale, rent to own. So I put some keywords in there, owner financed, um, uh, no credit is okay, no banks. Uh, down payment is required in capital letters, required, didn't say how much. So I sent it out like that in the several sites, Facebook groups, Craigslist, offer up, let go. Um, my house deals uh what is it bigger pockets all those sites you know every real estate site you can put it on the same thing i would have did with the wholesale deal i put it on as this type of deal to see what kind of thing because plus i want to build up my buyers list for anything i come across if i don't want to keep something i got a way to get rid of it you know so i gotcha. published it and uh let the buyers come rolling in so you publish it in the for sale section yes in the for sale section and i put it on a phone number that i dedicated specifically for this that goes directly to a voicemail because i don't want to get all these people calling me asking me a thousand questions so they Ooh. call yeah you know they're they gonna tear call up. <laughs> they'll tear it up they'll be on your phone so much i want to move tomorrow how much you got 500 nah bro yeah <laughs> not happening i don't even know you <laughs> All right, let me keep you keep me focused so we can get to these questions. Good gracious. Um, uh, okay, so you're putting it out there. Tell me about what type of calls you're getting and tell me about the buyer that actually came through. So I'm getting a lot of those people with a thousand dollars, maybe two thousand uh, dollars. I had a couple of people, um, you know, their main question is, How much is the payment? When I was like, Well, maybe I should put the payment out there. So they kept asking. So I said, 1250. 1250 a month. Let's see what go. Because when I did the rentometer.com or rentometer.com, I saw that the comps said between 1100 and 1500. So I put okay. 1250 for a four bedroom. That's a good website for the class to check out rentometer.com. Say that again. Say so, that okay. I put right. that on there and, uh, you know. You told him when he called you, he was like, uh, the particular guy, you, he's how, how'd that conversation go? So actually, this guy contacted me like the second day I had it out, and he back then he said he had thirty k. I said, wow. "Oh, thirty k, my kind of guy." So I, this you the talking my language. He talking my talk. 
when you want to move is all I want to know almost, but it ain't that serious. You have to do some screening. Um, so yeah. he contacted me back then. Then it's been like two weeks. That was before I even closed the deal because I started marketing as soon as I locked another contract. So I wanted to try to, I was on double close it if I had to, or, you know, do something creative, but that didn't work out that way because I didn't get a buyer yet. So I went on and um, some time went by, maybe two weeks. I went on and closed it last Wednesday. And uh, while I was over at the house, you know, checking on it, making sure my signs and stuff was up because I was listening to Eddie. He said, you need to put a bunch of signs out. So you know what I did? Follow directions. Go put a bunch of signs out. So I put signs up. Uh, I only had like maybe four or five out, but I said, no, I'm going to flood the market. They're going to know this house is over here. So I put a lot of arrow signs up all through the neighborhood. Now the phone really ringing. And then I went over there and he happened to roll by the same guy. Weird when I talked to him on the phone already. And I was like, oh yeah, that's you. He said, oh yeah, I talked to you before about this house. So he, he ended up going inside and taking a look at it with his wife. And he liked it. So he was like, um, so this house needs work. That's what he said. I said, well, I never claimed for it to be perfect, but you can move in just like it is. How much do you have to put down? And he started asking, well, how much do I need? I said, well, I'm not going to say a number first. You know, the rule in negotiation. I let them know. I just be real with people. I don't play around. You know, I keep it real. I'm not saying no what? number first. What you got? We, we, we have a line for that. I'll give you my line. If someone asks how much do we need, I'll let Eddie go. You got a line you use, Eddie? If they ask what? How much? How, how, much down, how much down? How much do you need down? Well, sir. Well, the more money you put down, the lesser your monthly payments will be. How much money do you have to put down? You got it. I like it. Wait a minute. Take a minute. Always put it back on them. Always yeah, put it back man. on them. So if they ask, yeah, reverse, put it back on them. If they ask, we're completely flexible, Miss Smith. As long as you got something reasonable. We're flexible, but you got a lot of you got some reasonable like to work with you. Woo. Hey, boy, you had them two together, boy. Hey, you're going to get some big checks. You're spitting that fire on here. All right. Dang. So you're going back and forth. So we actually didn't negotiate it right then and there. So he saw it because actually two people popped up at the house while I was there. I was like, dang, I just happened to be here. I didn't create know people were going to show up. Create momentum with that. So yeah, people and, and I and I saw them and I thought they were together originally, but I said, oh no, these two people together and these two people together. Oh, so that means this house ain't gonna last long. And so he got it in his mind too, like, oh yeah, telling his wife, we gotta move quick on this. I like this house. He's like, there's no basement. I said, Yeah, there's no basement, but you got a lot of room and you got a lot of potential in this house. See, I'm upselling it. I'm telling him, yeah, look at the potential you got. You got a large fenced in backyard, oh, you know, it's ready to go. You know, I'm a oh, salesperson right. anyway. So that, uh -oh. I didn't have no problem selling them once they meet me. They really in trouble. So uh, you're creating a uh, creating scarcity. This this thing isn't gonna last long. It showed up just on time too, because I thought they were together, but they were separate. She said, "Oh no, I don't even know them. They just happened to be here." I said, "Oh, so you wanted to?" I so like that. that. <laughs> I like that. All right, so let's talk about your buyer. Let's get up, and get some questions. All right, so we get to uh, maybe about. 20, 30 minutes later, I get a phone call from my, my line that I got dedicated straight for this. And I'm like, dang, he blowing my number up like four times. So I call. Oh, I just missed your call. Hey. Uh oh, Eddie, you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm losing Chris. Hey, Chris yeah. got all that technology. He's about to blow up, man. He's about to blow up. What are you doing? Go back, price, go and back. I think that's fair. Chris, hey Chris, you went, away, you, say, you went away on us, Chris, for about about thirty seconds. We couldn't hear you. Oh, okay, sorry. sorry about that. We're back. Are we back now? Hey, all that energy, man. You about to blow? You messing up the electricity? Hey, <laughs> all right, we're back again. So this buyer, the buyer, he called your phone up. Like, or he called you forty five minutes, twenty minutes after you left. That's what we heard. Okay, so he calls me. He's blowing the phone up, blowing up by four calls. I'm like, dang, who blowing that number up like that? Because I see it on my email when I miss a call. So I calls back, say, yeah. And he started asking about, yeah, I like the house, but what can you do on the price? And as you saw a second ago, I was asking 165000 for the house. He's like, you know, can you do something with the price? I, and I, I had to ask him. I put it back on him to say, well, what do you have in mind? There you go. So he came on in and said, well, um, I'm thinking 150. So I'm looking like, well, I'll do that. Let's go ahead and get you an application in.
to see if you qualify for our program and we'll see what we can do. There you go. Get the application. And on my application, which is pretty squared away, I got a nice and even asked simple questions like how soon are you looking to move? How much do you have to put down? How much can you pay or what's the most you can pay for a monthly rent? And uh, would you like to be notified of our upcoming houses? So basically just gets this stuff in writing so that I got something on paper so they can't say I said something else. And then I can keep them <laughs> on, on my buyers list for a future time if they don't take this house. Right. I know they qualified for something with 20K to put down. Yes. Yes. So um, right. he went on and said he filled it out, put in it to put down 20,000. They said uh, they didn't put anything down for the monthly amount. They put mortgage. So I had to call him back and explain how this deal works. There's no mortgage. We don't do mortgages. I'm not a mortgage broker or none of that stuff, but we will help you get into this house with this down payment. What can you do on a monthly? So he said, well, well I can do a thousand dollars. You got 20 K down. And what, when did he agree to the, a monthly payment? When did that come up? Uh, that was on the phone. Cause see, I need to do this meeting of the minds right here on the phone so I can get these documents drawn up to get them signed off. Oh yeah. So where so he said, what's the payment? I don't, I don't, what did he say? What, what did he, I mean, how, how'd that go? Monthly payment. We got 20 down. $1,000 a month, 1K. He wants to pay a thousand a month, but he said he's going to be making bigger payments than that to try to get that pay, that mortgage or that bill down. And I explained to him how the program works. Your down payment is non-refundable, non-refundable. Make sure, because he's not from here, so they don't speak good English. So I want to make sure it's clear, non-refundable. You will never you see it again. Yeah, and uh, you know, your yeah, monthly okay. amount. He did sign off on that a couple of times, my brother. Yeah. So your monthly amount, you know, that will be an amount. If you pay more than that, that can go towards the principal if you like. So he's like, yeah, I'm going to end up paying 2000 a couple of times and all of this. So I was like, all right, that's fine. Whatever, you know, bring it yeah, on in. Baby. So he agreed to 1000 a month, 20000 down. And uh, yeah. 165 uh, minus 165 minus 113 is what? Oh, but his price was 150 I'm sorry. He, I was asking 165 but we agreed oh. to 150 he got you down. Okay. Oh, That's I didn't surprising. mind coming down because that was high anyway. You didn't know it was high? Yeah, because remember, it's only worth about 150 or, one, or 135 or something. That is true. You know what? I probably would have done the same thing. So, with that number, number, that number, uh, about tw 24 days. Damn, man. Hey, that's sweet, huh? <laughs> yeah. What's the profit? Uh, That's so all your expenses. After all those expenses, I'm gonna net out about 18 profit. Yeah, you got it. See that guy? 150. How long did it take y'all to make $18,000 at your current job? And how much time did you put in it, brother Chris? How much time you put in? On this uh, one deal? On this one deal, maybe five hours at the most. Oh man, 18,000. Oh my God! You get paid more than a lawyer, man. How much that is an hour? Two, four, two, <laughs> Shit, man! Come on, man! I, 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 you show me a better hustle. Sign me up. I ain't seen really that. Five. You got that five. We got baby. into the other prop. Actually, it might even be more than that. It is more than that, actually, because you got to remember we got the down payment, we got the monthly cash flow of about two eighty a month. Because remember that payment is. 780, right? That's what I'm getting ready to go over now. Oh, okay. Cash flow. 150 minus 113. Yeah. Total equity got 37,000 total. So 37 on the front end? Well, that's the total equity if you got your loan balance. And oh, okay. Balance. Okay. 37 equity today. Today. So You're getting 20 of that right now. So you got 20, 17 equity left, right? Because he ain't going to pay you for the, what you you. The arrears and the space. 220 a month cash flow while I wait. Yeah, you got yeah, I got you. So you're getting 200 a month on a monthly, and your this 113 is going down every month. Correct. That's where your kicker is here, dog. They paying that mortgage down. He said he's gonna pay it off. That's what he told me. I'm paying it off. Yeah, he might. I mean, how many times have I heard that? I don't know. I don't know. They're not from here. He's from uh the Middle East or from Afghanistan at that. Oh, he might got yeah, he might pay it off. And he, they got yeah, that he, brain. Don't he got that he, he said a button. Just, 
a buddy of his just did something similar and paid off a house that was worth 250. They paid off 250k on another house. That's why he knew something about this. I'm happy for you. All right, let's get to some questions so we can get up out of here, man. Too many questions. I don't know when to get started. Okay, class, we're gonna get to some questions. Chris, you ready to knock some questions out, brother Eddie? Too. Bring it on. All right. Derek, welcome, Matt. Morris L wants the subject two package. Morris, you send me an email. We get that out to you. Corwin. Hey, Roberto. Racine Thomas wants to know how you found your first hard money lender. Chris, tell me about in this deal about your hard money lender. Well, in this particular deal, there was no hard money lender involved. I talked directly to the motivated seller. Keyword motivated. If you can get somebody that's motivated, they'll do whatever they can to help make that deal go through. There, Racine, there is no there is no hard money lender. I wanted to make sure we stress that. Hey, APZ, what's up? Jasmine's very proud of you, Chris. Thank you, Jasmine. King David, what up? You coming back in? New York City, Celeste. Way to go, Chris. Morris L. My email address is in the chat here. Uh, just, just right here in the chat. Chris buys houses at Gmail. Chris, this ain't your character. You're doing something else in the Facebook group that they're in. Uh, yeah, I'm in uh, a couple of the Facebook groups. I provide value everywhere I go. I try to add value or don't be there. If I'm there, it's it's a plus for everybody involved. It's a win, win, win all the way across the board. Oh, I yeah. Love. I like that, man. Everybody can win. We can all eat. Everybody. That's how it's supposed to be. Abundance mindset. Everybody. Black, white, Chinese, Indian, Jew, Gentile. <laughs> hey, all of them. All right. King David says the trust contract could work in North Carolina. It's not a land trust state. How does it get around that? I don't know. Do you know anything about that? I uh, the, you only place, the only place I heard that a land trust is no good, I believe, was it's one of those states up in the Northeast, and that's not one of them. Well, my, my friend Jessica that's a contributed for our newsletter says that they don't honor them in New York State. You know? I think it was either Pennsylvania, I want to say, but I'm not sure if that's it. It's one of those states over in that area that, that really won't do you no good. Not on that particular deal, but yes. Oh, Derek. Oh, okay. GTL wants to know, did you learn this stuff from me? Most definitely. I learned it from giants. I only learned from the the people who've been in the game for a long time because this information has to be passed on to the next people that come, you know, after, you know, this time passed. So That's I learned great. from Chris. I learned from Eddie. I learned a lot from Ron Legrand. I learned a lot from um, a lot of people, really. You know, I, I try to, you know, pick what I can and use it. I learned my virtual wholesaling from Kong, from Wholesale to Millions, the guy on there. So I do, like I said, a lot of my stuff is virtual anyway. And I just coupled all that stuff together in one little ball of wax and yes. throw it out. Hadouken! Hadouken! <laughs> oh, yeah, Chris, some people here want you to email them, too. Chris, you just, you bringing it today, dog. Good God. Look at uh, energy. That energy flowing good. Are you using Sling Studio? No, I don't know. What is a land trust? What is a land trust? I'm going to let one of y'all take that. I, I, I just can't preach about them no more, man. Go ahead, brother Chris. A land trust is nothing more than an entity that takes title to a property. Really nothing more than that. You don't operate a business through it. You don't do any of that stuff. All you do is hold title to the property. Period. I think a lot of people, Chris, in my opinion, get caught up in the word trust. They think it's so used by the ultra wealthy and then people over in Europe are all in this stuff and trust and then passing it on to their family that's eating the great coupon. And then they <laughs> got And that's exactly what they try to do at the title company by saying, yeah, you need to do this for your trust and do this if you're going to be taking rent payments. And I was like, no, I don't need any help with none of that stuff. Just please close this deal. We don't want none of that uh, extra stuff. Trying to confuse me. <laughs> But I already learned from the greats. I don't need them to teach me. 
If I'm learning from the greats already. Hey, they want to double up, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I ain't, I don't mad, I'm not mad at them for trying to get that money, but it ain't happening here. <laughs> Good for you. A trust is period. All you have to do when you think about land trust, a way to take title to a house, period. Don't even, don't fancy it up. Anything more than that is stressful. That's all it is. That's right. Black ink on white paper. Ain't that what you call it? I just got that from, from Ron, man. <laughs> black <laughs> ink on white paper. And people are so afraid of black ink on white paper. They're afraid of these contracts and agreements. Just read it. Yeah. In regular Derek's, language. Derek Space says a land trust is an arrangement in which one party holds property for another party's benefit. That's right. That's exactly That's right. what it is. What site are you on? I don't know. Just go to Barron's. Get your Barron's book. Nashville. We'll be in Nashville in January for the summit. You going to the summit too, Chris? Oh, you going to that too? See, that stuff all back to back. I was just looking at that like, man, I had to take a whole month off. You know, man, next year I'm going to focus on some more studying. I do I do have another business here in St. Louis. I mean, they can run it a few days without me, but I don't know if they can last that long. The JW Method wants to know, when did you have to pay the arrears for that loan, Chris? Thanks, JW Method. What city are you in, bro? Uh, for the arrears for that loan, I needed to pay it before they started the foreclosure proceedings, which I did not start paying it until I actually closed the deal. I could have paid it ahead of time, but I was like, eh, you yeah. know, I don't want any funny business going on or no. Because, you know, once that money's gone, it's gone. Yeah. So, you know, I said, I'll wait till I close. The day I closed, I went in and put it in on that bank that night. They drafted my account the next morning and it was gone. Poof. And that loan is now current again. Mm -hmm. So oh, good for you. Wow, that's cool. You got your Dana Gardner. Which do you feel is a better marketing piece? Ringless voicemail or the text blasting, Chris? Well, I would say in reality, for the amount of money it costs, I don't see anything wrong with doing both. Right. See, that's kind of how my marketing works. I do ringless voicemail. I don't do too much text blasting. I do a little bit. And I do, uh, I have a cold caller. He's actually on the phone right now. I have a cold caller over in the Philippines. Am I frozen? Uh -uh. Oh, okay. I thought I was frozen on it. It looked like it's frozen on my screen. Um, but yeah, I, I have a, you know, cold caller, ringless voicemail. I do a little bit of text. Um, and I do very little mail, very little, not too much. Cause that mail will tear your butt up. It's so weird. Me and Eddie, we talk about this daily, how things are just changing. Eddie and I are from the dinosaur era, if you will. <laughs> There, I mean, text, people didn't know what a freaking text message was. Yeah, what's a text? And everybody responds to text. Yeah. And that phone shit. When you call them with a ring of this voice, man, everybody got that phone by them. As soon as that shit make a noise, everybody tell oh, wait, one more phone. One more phone. Man, what that shit is addictive, man. <laughs> this is the most addictive thing I think ever created, man. And my thing is, I just want a response. I don't mind if they don't want to sell. Just tell me no. We get you off the list. I don't. I'd rather have an answer. Yes, right. you want to sell. No, you don't want to sell. Versus, I sent out a bunch of marketing, and I'm going to pray that somebody call me back. I want you to tell me yes or no. Wow. And All if right. you say yes, we got a plan for you, baby. Come on in. What you got? Sirion says, got? "What would the best outcome be?" And the worst outcome, the what is the best? Give us a positive and a worst, a positive and a negative on this transaction, Chris. Best case scenario on this transaction is uh, he pays for a long time and defaults like right at the end when he's almost paid off. And I got to put it back out and put a new tenant buyer in there 10 years down the line. That's, I guess, the best. And then, I don't know, I guess that could be the best. That could be the best or a second best. He just cashed me out and, uh, take the house and do what he's supposed to do with it. Uh, as far as worst case scenario, I don't know. Worst thing that can happen is they don't make payments. I kick them out, put a new tenant buyer in there and do it all over again to get another 20 K from the next person. Oh my so God. You can't really lose on this for real. Unless they go in there. I mean, I guess the worst, worst thing they could do is they can't even burn the house down because we got insurance on it. I don't know. Yeah. The, the worst I feel so bad for you having to go resell this and get another twenty thousand, Chris. You just got it so rough. Yeah, <laughs> man, that, that, that's a really that's a terrible thing, Chris. Another terrible. twenty, they might get thirty in the future. <laughs> yeah, that is that. That's that's not a good thing, Chris. 
Cause this bar that's going in there, he's gonna fix it up. It's gonna be nicer when I get it back than I than when I'm giving it to him. I'm sure. Every time, most of the time, man. Thank God, knock on wood. But I never got one back that's been bad. The worst, the worst I've gotten gotten them back is paint and carpet. But that's it. Cosmetics. Yeah, they got Cosmetics. different different mindset of these people going in there. I love it, man. I'll, I'll never rent a property out, man. Not the normal, traditional way, man. I, I can't it's deal with that stress, man. It's too stressful. I don't have time for it. Yeah, I like to live my life smooth and collect checks. Traditional rentals do not even sound good. I don't even want to think about a traditional rental, ever. Unless yeah. it's a, a huge apartment complex or something where somebody yeah. managing it. I am going to get into that right. next year. That's my plan. Right. So. right. Daniel, Daniel wants to know, you know how Dave, to Dave Lindahl good on that too, man, as far as the apartment go. Oh, really? Yeah, he, he bought over like eight to ten. He had over about 10,000 units, man. He sold off about three or 4,000 of them. Yeah, I've been trying to get up there like Uncle GC, Grant Cardone. So I'm trying to get some, some buildings like that. Stupid money coming in. Yeah. All right, we're over an hour. Let me get this. You found a deal. He did a, he did a ringless voicemail. Um, Marquise, he wouldn't know how you found a deal. Hey, happy holidays, Daniel. Um, what did the seller gain? Oh yeah, that's a good question. Shepherd the trucker. What did the seller gain from this deal? What did the seller gain, Chris? Well, the seller gained peace of mind and debt relief. They don't have to think about making that payment. It's still on their name. It's still on their credit report, but they don't have to make payments. They can keep their money to go into their own household, not to some alligator eating up all the money over here that they don't even live in. So I gave them, I solved the problem for them and solved the problem for that end tenant buyer. Solving problems, get you paid. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Paul J, congratulations <laughs> from NYC. He said um, he gets excited about hearing this stuff. Paul J. Hilda, hey, great content, Chris. Sugar Cane, first show she's caught, he or she, I don't know. You set up, you got to hit the bell class if you want to see when the uh, notifications are coming. Autumn says she loves your posts on Facebook, Chris. Oh, thank you. I try to make help sure out people, got, like I say. Make sure you guys hit a thumbs up on this video. Thumbs up, subscribe, subscribe, baby. JW Method wants, Jared wants to know in Houston, if you're going to do a short sale, do you put that house under contract or do you just go through the process with the owner? It's the same thing. Same thing. Yeah, you put it under contract regardless. With the owner. With yeah. the seller. That's right. You got to be with the seller because they're the ones that own the house. You can't go to ABC Mortgage Company and get a house on the contract. They don't own. They don't. They don't own it. So that's sure. the key word. Like I said earlier, get you a motivated seller, and they'll do whatever it takes to make it work. Yeah. Oh yeah. Good gracious. Oh, Jared. Okay, we're almost at the bottom. Never put a house in your name. Don't do that. Never put a house in your name. Daniel, we went over a whole bunch of ways he found leads a few minutes ago. He just crunched all that stuff. Morris L. Technically, you can use a regular grand tours trust. Same thing. Land trust is simpler. I don't know. So I'm not a trust expert. I just know a land trust works. Theodore in Chicago. Mr. Trans. Uh, T.B. Williams. Hey, Eddie. Thanks, Chris and Chris. Thank you for getting valuable education. Moving forward to the un unconventional becoming more comfortable. Chris, would you say this is unconventional? This is very unconventional. And it's like a world that just feels so natural to me. You know, it just feels like I belong here. I have to. Because, <laughs> you know, like I said, my other business here in St. Louis, I work in resale. So, like, I'm an auctioneer. So, 25 and I, 35 and I, 45 and I. So, I sell stuff like that. Oh, boy, so, you good, boy. Whoa. <laughs> so, you Get know. that thing one more time, man. <laughs> All right, we gotta go right here. We gotta go 25 and I 35 and I 40 and I 65 and I come on back, come on back, wanna go bed? No, nope, sold it. Something like that. Just messing around. <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta uh so I live in that world already. So now, like I said, wow. I was listening to uh, Grant Cardone and he said sometimes you can be in the wrong vehicle. So I have some of the talents yeah. and some of the skills to close people, negotiate, all of that. But if you if I could flip a living room set or you know a, a piano or whatever we're selling, do it on some real estate and get some real money. Yeah. So I say come growth. on into the unconventional side. So it's perfect for what I've been doing. Wow. Hey, they say who, who holds the insurance? 
for the subject too. So the way I just did the insurance, matter of fact, they just sent me an email today. Uh, the insured will be the mortgage company and the seller will be named insured on there on the policy. So you're not going to put your name on it at all. Yeah. My, uh, actually the, uh, my company is the, is the, uh, is on there. So we got your company, your name, your company, the seller and the mortgagee is the lender. Yeah, exactly. You got a power of attorney, man. You'd be good. Exactly. Yep. You could walk limited power of attorney. POA. I remember one time I got to check one of my seller's names for like 4,000. I went to the bank with that power of attorney. They didn't like it, but they cashed it. <laughs> <laughs> they got to respect the game, baby. Respect the craft. Sheila did that for Eddie. Should have seen it. Should have seen that folk looking at the looking at that power chair. They went to the back. <laughs> they had to go get the boss to look at it and say, "We gotta honor it." Dang. <laughs> go to rise, baby. If I give you a pen and instruct you to hold it for me in a few days, give it back to me tomorrow. Would you? If we put it in an express trust, I don't know that. T Tunster, what happens if the seller dies before the house closed and the family wants the house back? That's a good question. Well, it, they can't have it back, man. You got to write paperwork, son. Hey, it's over with. It's a wrap. Yeah, you need to. Well, that's the only thing I would say, Chris. I, I think what you're doing is perfect. Uh, as At this stage of my life, I want to make sure that I don't want no problems. Right. I'm going to give. I try to give a seller, a few, even if it's a, a few. Like we did one recently. It was They were 9,000 in the rears. And we still gave the seller 500 bucks, you know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't want people yeah, to I, always, I always give them something, but they won't feel like I just this, this rate them cost the cold. <laughs> we give them at least five hundred. And in reality, I'm still waiting for some about five hundred to come back from the seller because we had to take this house subject to a uh, sewer bill lien that was on there for like four seventy. So I told her we needed that to close the deal. So they said they're gonna. I told them they can either give it to me later and I'll pay it. But I didn't do that. I just got an exception at closing so that they can just keep it on there until they send me that money. Then I'll put it towards that. Yeah. So closing yeah. subject to something else. There you go. You could to subject to 50,000 liens on there if you want to. It don't even matter. Right. See, that's why I say when you get in this unconventional world, you find out that all this stuff they told you on the regular stuff is lies. It's like, man, I need to go get I need to know what you really can and can't do. And really, you find out it ain't, ain't really much you can't do. Chris, when you find out damn near everything they taught us is lies, even in school, god damn it, a lot of awakening happened. Shit. Mm -hmm. It ain't just oh, with the real estate. It's a whole mental game playing on play. They on the mental game level playing field. See, Chris, what Shit. they want to do, the system wants you to keep funneling your money to them. Mm -hmm. They want the system to keep going, baby. They don't want no, you can't break the system. Now you got to get in line. Get in the matrix now. Just follow along. Now be good. <laughs> exactly. Don't and I even tell people that when I'm like, you want to learn this stuff? You got to almost delete everything you've known before and start from scratch. That's the only way it's going to wrap your mind around a lot of this stuff. Just delete that jump. I got to get a real estate agent. My agent said this. You don't need an agent for none of this stuff I'm doing. You can use one to get you some leads or some deals. But yeah. All in right. reality, I'm going to get my license. Go ahead, man. Why make 3% when you can make 300%? Woo! Hallelujah. Much Hallelujah. Machuela says, whose name will they put the property in, Chris? Whose name? Uh, it's it's in the trust name. I actually put her initials and the numbers to her address as the name of the trust. That's but then the beneficiary of the trust would be, you know, me. Karina Which they won't see that, though. That's not in public record. No, they won't see that. Karina wants to know that she says there's more steps involved than she thought. Chris, for someone that thinks that this is a a mountain, what can you say for someone starting out that wants to do a subject too? I would say um, it is an advanced strategy. Learn from the best. Stay tuned in to Chris Haskins' channel. I actually watched the videos about, I don't know, four times to make sure I got a, a complete understanding of what to do because it's all laid out there. Um, I would suggest, uh, yeah, get the education to know exactly how to do it. 
And if you can get a mentor or somebody that can hold your hand if you need all that. But I'm not that type of person. I like to just get in there and take action. But so um, it's not that hard. You just got to have your documents in, in the row and, and, and perform. Take action. That's it. You're going to mess something up. I mean, nothing's perfect. I, my first ones, and it's not like nobody's going to come with a gun and shoot you if you do. Yeah. Right. Even if GTO, you screw up, it happens. GTO, just email me if you want the subject to docs. Just email me. I don't even have the, I don't have time to. Subject to, that's the best way to go ahead and take control of that property. From what I see. Simply six has 170 in equity from an investment. Wants to buy a rental property to create passive income. Is that a good idea? Heck no. I wouldn't. Not one property. You can take, you can take that 170 and buy you about 170 subject to. <laughs> exactly. Once you Chris find the power of this, you will not even look on the MLS for a real estate property. You won't even think about a lot of the stuff that you'd be thinking about. It's like another world that's right in our face, and most of us can't even see it. Right. That's right. Put your email in the in the chat, Chris, so people can know where to get in touch with you. Oh, I thought I just put that. Let's see. At Chris Monroe STL on all social media. At Chris Monroe STL. Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, you name it. Same thing. Eddie, Eddie and I were just talking, just talking this morning about how times are changing and how people are working harder for less. People are working less and they're making a lot more money. And it's all up here, Chris. How final words, Chris? And then I'm gonna get to Eddie too. Final words about I want you to tell me how when you learn, I remember me when I learned about subject two, I felt like I was being having a rebirth, if you will, like all this shit has been crammed in my head about having a realtor, got to go get a loan, turn in bank statements, have a credit report, turn in tax returns, all that crap is irrelevant. Tell me about how you feel about that, and what can you tell people that can kind of that are, that are want to do a, a sub two deal? Just break that down a little bit. What I would say is uh, educate yourself. I mean, that's the only way it's going to make sense to you because a lot of that stuff is useless, you know, paying all those extra fees and all of this stuff. Like you just said, it's just uh, I would just suggest getting the education and, and execute because anything beyond that, it won't really make sense to you until you put some skin in the game and go through the process. Because I mean, mean, that's the best way to learn. I mean, you can learn a lot in the classroom, but you can learn a lot by getting out in the field. Oh, yeah. I mean, you gotta get. Yeah. Go ahead, Eddie. I'm sorry. Now, I was gonna say you gotta get your you gotta get your feet dirty, man. You gotta get, go out there. That's the only way to truly learn. You can read all these books and buy all these programs and buy all this technology, but if you never pull that trigger, nothing's gonna happen. So you just do the do the math. Nothing. Plus nothing equals nothing. <laughs> that is. And also to add to that, for these people that got money, like the guy that was just messaging up there, if you're gonna spend some money, my opinion, I would spend the money on smart marketing. Learn how to market well and put that money toward marketing to bring you a funnel of deals where you can't even do nothing with them. You got so many deals coming in, you're like, damn, let me follow the marketing down. That's what I mean. That's what I would suggest putting the money into your education and getting that marketing up. All of that other stuff. You don't need it. Plus, you need to get a coach too. You got that kind of money. Get you a coach, man. But that's yeah. that's just if you want to speed up your process and learn the ropes quick, you know, get you a coach. If not, you know, you could do it yourself, but it's gonna take you a lot longer if you got that time away. You yeah, gotta make true. a lot of more mistakes and all that stuff. Unless you a person that can go out there and just learn easily, then you know, go on out there and go for it. But if you know it gonna you need to really know it or need somebody to really walk you through it to get your deal done, please get a coach. Yep. Because it, you 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 make less mistakes. They on the right channel right now. Hit that subscribe button and hit that bell because uh it's all it's right. Here. I mean, how many videos you got on here, Chris? Four hundred or something? I don't know. A four lot. Million. I've seen about three hundred of them. Yeah, <laughs> he got like four million, I think. <laughs> The information is here. This is the information age. So there is no excuse anymore 
than you know to just let this stuff go by that all these people cash these juicy checks in your face right. while we struggling trying to get 10 more dollars from somebody <laughs> it's all here man just dedicate yourself say i'm gonna get in there. i'm gonna learn this and i'm gonna do it you know that's what you gotta do that's what i told myself i'm like i remember back in the day y'all i'm like you know what today i will learn subject two today this is exactly. back in 2006. I'm i like, learned I'm it in two weeks i learned all that stuff in two weeks everything i needed to know to get this deal to the finish line in two weeks that's because that, i dedicated Eddie. myself though it took look at that Eddie. he learned this in two weeks it took me man to you know to gather the data back in 06 no one was teaching it online Eddie. That's the first deal I actually did was a subject too. Dang. But you know when I learned from from the Godfather back then when he was teaching it, he was giving you all, all the tools in the toolbox. Like it was a five day intense event, man, where you just you learned everything: subject to short sales, um, shit, wholesaling, retailing. Man, there was so much information, man. When I left out of my mind was about to blow. <laughs> but that was the first deal I did. It was a subject too, and then you know it was a wholesale after that. Yeah, yeah, and I only been doing this for a little bit. Like I said, I closed my first deal on August thirty first. I've closed seven wholesale deals, and to and tomorrow I'll be the eighth deal, and I got another deal scheduled to close the first week of January. So I hit the ground running on all of this stuff. I'm new, really. It just seemed like I've been around. Eddie, yeah, I'm back. He got so much technology, you can't. Well, maybe we just we too slow. Not a long time, you know. Like I said, Chris, last thing we heard Chris, was man. you haven't been doing it since August. We didn't hear nothing after that. Chris, final words, Eddie. Final words. Stop and remember. Whatever is going on in your mind is what you are attracting. What do you mean by that? So whatever you keep thinking about, thinking about, thinking about, you're gonna track into your life. Whether it's lack, whether it's deals, whether it's money, whether it's pain, whether it's hurt, you're gonna keep getting whatever you keep focusing on. Whatever you keep thinking about, whatever you keep worrying about, you're gonna keep attracting. You, you got to it's a magnet the mind is a magnet it got to attract we energy so we gotta we got a force in us that pull towards whatever we focus on it's funny how as i sit here and talk to you i'm attracted to you and then we attracted chris in it's so crazy <laughs> yep like minds like minds you're right hey. Eddie. you're right final thoughts chris i didn't hear nothing you you've been gone for about a minute dog uh, I'm, yeah, back. I'm back. That was a commercial. <laughs> right back here. All right. So, yeah, basically, I was just saying I'm pretty new to the game. It seemed like I've been around a long time, but I just closed my first deal August 31st. Closed deal number seven last week. I'm going to close deal number eight tomorrow. And we got a first deal ready to close on the first week of January. And that was wholesale deals. All those are wholesale. So that's why I said I had to add an extra tool to the toolbox so that when these other things come my way. I'm not just shooing them away like, well, there's no equity. Get rid of it. And their deals right in my face. And I don't want to just miss it. So I'm like, yeah, I got to go and learn some other stuff. So that's why I say everybody can anybody really can do this if they dedicate themselves to learning the information and taking massive action. That's all they got to do. Wow. man, yeah. I love it. Wow. That is Hit the ground running, baby. Hit the you ground running. I look at you, I'm thinking about myself when I started in 03 or 04. I thought wholesaling was like the thing to do. Yeah, me too. I thought, I'm like, you know what? I'm making this paper, man. I don't want to hear nothing about that. Buying it. I'm glad. Buying. That's a good thing, too. You got in the game and implement subject tools for that cash flow. Keep yeah. on getting those, man. You want to get you a couple of those? Flip you a couple holes, son. Flip you a couple holes, son. But them doggone subject two deals, you don't never really want to sell them. Just exactly. keep keeping them. You want to hold that puppy. Let that debt sit on that name and hold it. Let the golden goose keep laying the golden eggs. You got so it. When you do your when you get your money, Chris, God man, I look at you. I'm like, uh, you have to have a place. Eddie, once again, Eddie and I talking about this. You have to figure out in your mind it is a burden. Where is this money gonna go? Where is it gonna go to store? You can turn it. 
to work for you instead of you working for it. So when you get it, you have to send it back out the door. It can attract some friends. So that's a mindset that I just want to leave for my viewers. When you get it in, dude, pay some principal down. I don't know how many houses you own, but pay some principal down, dog, because those your long term holes are the engines, dude, that they crank every <laughs> month. I get to wake up in the morning like, uh, OK, it's in the bank. Let's do it. Let's go. That's right. And uh, basically, the and the thing that made me kind of scale up so quickly in this game is because I came in the game. I maybe spent about a thousand dollars before I got my first deal, but it was to set up the infrastructure, phone lines. I got a cold caller on there to, to do all that front end dealing with people getting yelled at, cussed out, all of that. You know that stuff makes a difference. <laughs> you know, I don't want to talk to them people. I want to talk to people who ready to go really? or at least want to know more information. I can close them from there. Just get them in the phone, get their basic information. And I'll, you know, shut them down from there. So that's basically what I would suggest anybody with some money, once they get it, you know, put it into your system, invest in your business, invest in yourself. Cause that's the only way, you know, I want to, I'm trying to get it scaled up. I'm trying to do it big in 2019. So. Oh my yeah. Lord. Oh yeah. If somebody did watch. Okay, class, make sure you take a few seconds, hit the, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. And we're going to be staying in touch with you, Chris, over the next few weeks, man, to follow you. I think you're, I think you got a bright future, brother. I yeah, man, we it. all gonna be ATL next month. That's, That's right. right. Coming down. I gotta call down there and reserve my seat as soon as I get off here, so they don't give me no mess to my. We sold out or some old stuff. Yeah. All right, class. I see y'all next time. Talk to you soon. All right, guys. Peace.